Hello YouTubers, welcome to our channel. Now presenting the next episode of Unexplored History, Peshwas of the Maratha Kingdom, Part 2. Number 10. Release of Bahiropanta Peshwa Bahiropanta Pingre was the appointed Peshwa of Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj until 1713. During this period, there was a conflict between Tarabai and Shahu Maharaj which resulted in Bahiropanta's capture at Lohagad by Kanoji Angre. The responsibility to free him was given to Balaji Vishwanath. Balaji Vishwanath Bhatt, who was then the logistic manager of the army, referred to as Sena Karta. Balaji Vishwanath was able to diplomatically handle the situation and ensure the freedom of Bahiropanta. He was soon appointed as the Peshwa of Shahu Maharaj. Thus, starting with Balaji Vishwanath, for the next 105 years, the reigns of the Prime Ministry, or Peshwai, was at the hands of his eight descendants. Number 9. Balaji Vishwanath We do not know the exact birth date for Balaji Vishwanath, but approximately he was born around 1660. He was appointed as the Peshwa on 17th November 1713 by Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj. He stopped the Cold War amongst the statesmen during his tenure. He, along with Ranoji Bosle, were the first statesmen to visit Delhi in 1718-1719. That was 52 years after Shivaji Maharaj's famous visit to Agra in 1666. He helped free Yesubai from the Mughal prison after 30 years in captivity. Also, he ensured that Maratha state was recognized by the Mughal emperors and Marathas were permitted to collect the revenue in the south along with a quarter share for themselves. He died on 2nd April 1720 due to old age at his Kalawada Saswad residence on the banks of river Kara. Number 8. Senior Bajirao Peshwa or Bajirao Ballad Bajirao Ballar was born on 18th August 1700, possibly at Dubere near Nasik. He accompanied his father to Delhi during the journey in 1719. Although there was strong opposition from the members of the council, he was appointed as the Peshwa on 17th April 1720 by Shahu Maharaj at Masur near Karhad. In his small tenure of 20 years, he won major battles at Palkhed, Delhi, Jaitpur, Bhopal, Chitradurg, Malwa, and Bundelkhand. It is debatable but worthy to note that Bajirao was never defeated in his tenure of 40 battles on the field. He was always known as the heavenly born cavalry leader. While en route to the provinces near Khargon and Handia after defeating Nasir Jung, he breathed his last on the banks of river Narmada at Raver Kedi on 28th April 1740 at the age of mere 40 years. While praising Bajirao in his book, Bernard Montgomery writes, The way Bajirao outgeneraled Nizamul Mulk at the Battle of Palkhed is an excellent example of strategic mobility. Number 7. Nana Sahib Peshwa or Balaji Bajirao Nana Sahib Peshwa was born on 6 December 1721 at Sate near Pune. He was appointed as the Peshwa after his father's death on 25th of June 1740. He had lived in Satara since the age of 11 and learned his politics from Shahu Maharaj himself. He brought stability to the Maratha kingdom in his tenure. Pune emerged as an important city during his tenure. Excellent town planning and water management in Pune were some of the major accomplishments under Nana Sahib's tenure. He excluded 660 families from the property tax which included people from all castes except Brahmins while town planning for Pune. In his military tenure, he successfully completed expeditions of Malwa, Karnatak and Northern India. The third battle of Panipat took place under his tenure. Distraught by the loss at Panipat, he died at Parvati near Pune on 23rd of June 1761. He will always be remembered as a leader who teamed together with people from all origins of the society. Number 6. 
सीनियर माधवराव पेशवा और माधवराव बल्लाड आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ नाना साहेब पेशवा महाजी पुरंदरे विजिटेड सातारा एंड रिक्वेस्टेड छत्रपति राम राजा टू अपॉइंट माधवराव एज द पेशवा माधवराव वॉज सब्सिक्वेंटली अपॉइंटेड एज द पेशवा ऑन ट्वेंटी एथ जुलाई सेवनटीन सिक्सटी वन ही वॉज ऑलवेज नोन एज अ स्ट्रिक्ट एंड डिसिप्लिन लीडर ड्यूरिंग हिज टेन्यूअर द मराठा फोर्सेज डिफिटेड ओल्ड फोर्स लाइक हैदर अली एंड निजाम अली द फेमस बैटल ऑफ राक्षस भुवन वॉज फॉट एंड वन अंडर हिज एबल लीडरशिप He also had to deal with internal politics and conflicts with his uncle Raghunath Rao. He managed to subdue multiple attempts of revolt made by Raghunath Rao. We have covered 10 important points about this particular Peshwa in a separate video. Please check out the link to it at the end of this video. Number 5 Narayan Rao Peshwa Narayan Rao was the younger son of Nana Saheb Peshwa. The members from the Peshwa's council namely Sakaram Bapu Bokil, Nana Fadanvis, Raghunath Rao, Haripanta Tatya Fadke, Moroba Dada Fadnavis, along with Narayan Rao, went to Satara requesting the appointment of Narayan Rao as Peshwa. After initial confusion on the succession, Madhav Rao Peshwa's nine-point will was surrendered and Narayan Rao was appointed as the Peshwa on 13th December 1772. Narayan Rao spent his childhood at Gangapur near Nasik with his grandmother gopika bai he was very intelligent in sanskrit grammar and languages but failed to adapt politics or battlefield due to his small age he could never scale up to the responsibilities of a peshwa he attempted to copy his elder brother but failed to do so in an example of his failed judgment of a dispute he gave the decision against sakho hari gupte furious by this sakho hari gupte and raghava dada planned to arrest Narayan Rao Peshwa Raguji Angre came to know about this plan and alerted Peshwa about it but it was too late the plot to arrest Narayan Rao went sour and Sumer Singh Gardi murdered the Peshwa in the heat of the moment Muhammad Isaf Sumer Singh's accomplice mentions the detail of the murder in his confession particularly noting that to kill him was nowhere in the plan and he was killed by Sumer Singh at the last moment people often curse anandi bai for this murder and narrate the fictitious story of changing the letters dh to ma in the arrest order but this is not true in fact anandi bai later saved narayan rao peshwa's wife after his murder number 4 raghunath rao after the death of narayan rao when shanivar wada was in deep sorrow and pain Raghunath Rao was planning his next moves to be the Peshwa. He got lucky and was appointed as the Peshwa by Amrut Rao, the son of Chhatrapati Raja Ram on 31st October 1773. Finally after 12 years of cold war, Raghava managed to ascend as the Peshwa. Although brave and courageous, Raghava was someone who would easily get carried away by false praise and get brainwashed by his companions. It was Raghava who led the maratha troops to the fort of attack on the bank of river sindhu but all his valor was wasted against his hollow stature his decision to join hands with the nizam and the british at times was a huge mistake it was raghunath rao who had driven away abdali in 1756 beyond the fort of attack and was to be the next leader in the line of succession but his greedy and selfish nature always got the better of him he failed to follow the path set by his father or his elder brother number 3 junior madhavrao that is savai madhavrao peshwa or madhavrao narayan the pregnant widow of narayan rao who had fled to fort purandar after the murder of narayan rao gave birth to her son madhavrao on 18th april 1774 surprisingly he was appointed as the peshwa merely at the age of 1 month and 10 days that is 40 days being a child the governance was controlled by senior statesmen in the court nana fadnavis looked after the administrative systems while mahaji shinde took care of the military systems his tenure saw the first direct anglo maratha conflict leaders like haripanta tatya fadke nana fadnavis tukoji holkar mahaji shinde managed the affairs and defeated the british 
in this first war. The British then signed a Treaty of Salbai on 20th December 1782, which led to a relative peace between the Marathas and the British until the Second War in 1802. During the Peshwa's tenure, the Emperor of Delhi Shah Alam bestowed upon Mahadji Shinde the titles of Vakili Mutalak, which means the recent ambassador, and Amirul Umbra, which means the head of all wise men. The defeat of Panipat was also avenged by Mahadji Shinde during Madhura Narayan's tenure, when the Maratha forces led by Mahadji Shinde captured and killed Gulam Khadar. They also blasted the tomb of Najib Khan Rohila and the fort of Pathargarh that housed it. It is important to note that the last victory of allied Maratha forces also took place under his tenure, when the Marathas won the Battle of Kharada against the old four Nizam on 12th March 1795. The celebrated career of Madhara Narayan ended on 27th of October 1795 when he met an accident in Shaniwarwada. He fell down from a balcony on a fountain and the tap of the fountain damaged his hips so badly that led to his death. Number 2. Junior Bajirao Second Bajirao or Bajirao Raghunath Bajirao Raghunath was the son of Raghunath Rao Peshwa, named after his grandfather, the great Bajirao. After the untimely death of Madhavarao Narayan, Bajirao Raghunath was appointed as the Peshwa on 5th December 1795. Since he was always under confinement due to his infamous father, he barely learnt anything about good governance or administration. He incorrectly arrested Nana Fadnavis as soon as he came to power, but released him later in 1798 when he found it being a mistake. The infamous Treaty of Vasai was signed by him on 31st December 1802 when he understood that he had indeed committed an error by signing this treaty. He reverted on it and appointed Bapu Gokhale as a cavalry leader and asked Ganpatrao Panse to open a cannon factory at Shukravar Pet in Pune. On 10th of July 1815, Gangadhar Shastri Patwardhan, who was the Diwan of the Gaikwads, was killed in Pandarpur. Patwardhan was to be protected by the British as per a previous agreement. The British thus took this an opportunity and declared Trimbakji Dengre as the murderer. Five years leading into this event, Bajirao was actually planning to fight against the English army. Trimbakji Dengre was initially captured but later ran away from British prison and with the help of Pindari army was fighting the British. After multiple skirmishes, the third Anglo-Maratha war broke out on 5th of November 1817. Bajirao used the old strategy of moving with the herd and the British army kept following him. As and when Maratha army got opportunities, they also led guerrilla attacks on the English army. The British were frustrated. They forced Chhatrapati of Satara to remove Bajirao as the Peshwa. Bajirao kept fighting in his own capacity while many of his captains and chieftains deserted him to join the British army. Finally, he surrendered on 3rd June 1818 at Dhulkot Bari near Asirgad. Thus, the empire of the great Maratha sovereign state ended when a lonely Bajirao surrendered to English officer Malcolm. Number 1. Summary As seen in part 1 and this part 2, the Peshwas of the Maratha state from Shamraj Panta Rozekar to Bajirao Raghunath served in the best of their abilities to protect, govern and serve the kingdom. All of them never dodged their duties and always led from the front as the post suggests. There are many letters that portray the Peshwas as true loyal servants of the Maratha kingdom. Many consider this post and the Peshwas as people who were only good with the administration, but almost all the Peshwas have equally contributed in the military conquests and expeditions. May it be Moropanta Peshwa, who led the troops at the Battle of Saler, or Bajirao, who led armies to Delhi, Nana Saheb with his Karnataka expeditions, or Madhurao, who led the famous victory at Rakshas Bhuvan. The continual effort to gel with the empire and all the captains like Mahajji Shinde etc. thus led to the Maratha flag flying high on the red fort of Delhi for many years. 
this was indeed a golden era of Maratha Empire. If you already subscribed to our channel, please press the bell icon next to the channel name to receive alerts and notifications as soon as a next video is released. Our books based on facts and contemporary evidences from Maratha history are now available online and at all leading bookstores. Hope you liked our video. To share this informative video with your friends and colleagues, please like and share the video. Let us know your view about the topic via comments and please subscribe to our channel to see more such videos. Thank you. And once again, thank you to all our subscribers as we recently crossed the 8000 mark.